We, the Portland Lesbian Choir, humbly acknowledge that the Portland metropolitan area rests on the land inhabited by the many peoples of the river and the summer guests, including but not limited to the tribes of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Clackamas, Bands of Chinook, and the Confederate tribes of the Grand Ronde, who made their homes along the Columbia, Wilmal, and Willamette, Willamute Rivers. Today, Portland's diverse and vibrant Native communities are 70,000 strong, among them descended from more than 380 tribes, both local and distant. We take this opportunity to offer respectful recognition to the Native communities in our region today and to those who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. Thank you. Welcome to A Roof and a Bed, the Portland Lesbian Choir's premiere of two new commissions, in the first, by Seattle composer Giselle Wires, every word of the lyrics come from poems written by unhoused women in the Pacific Northwest. The second, written by PLC's assistant director, Kim Horenstein, tells her family's story of love and heartbreak with their adopted son. This concert was inspired by the choir's desire to bring focus to the housing crisis in our community. We hope you will be inspired as well. I am Mary McCarty, PLC's Artistic Director. The choir has worked hard to keep going during the pandemic. We look forward to seeing you in person next season. Fill my head a little 
when I first got into the drug scene, that was in 94, I think. Everybody was in the scene of snorting coke, cocaine. And I tried it, really did not like it. But they said, you're hooked for a reason. I would have to say 04 is when I found myself like on the street without having a key to a house, um, without having friends that I could stay with. To do my habit, I sold as well. So they busted me and they took me to jail, but they released me in the dead of winter with no place to go. The women on the streets told me about the different places to get places to go eat, um, sleep, um, of course if I'm drugs, because I wasn't done. And um, they told me about TPI. So while I was doing that, someone told me about treatment. First time ever heard that. I'm on treatment for what? I didn't know I was an addict. I didn't know I was hooked all those years prior, but I was. But I still wasn't ready. While I was out on the streets, um, just horrible things. I need to get involved. I need to start weaning myself from this. But it took years. My first taste was in 94, December 11, 2011. That's my clean date. Thank you, yes. While I was doing my <laughs> treatment, um, I stayed at Jean's place. This is what I'm saying to myself. I'm taking different steps. And I'm also noticing that I'm not going around the same old people. I noticed that I wasn't walking back into the same places. And I started walking that way. That's when I got signed up for PCC. And I went there and I said, I want to know more about becoming a counselor. Still at Jean's place. Started at PCC, started my aftercare. And next thing I know, I was in shared housing. My caseworker here called me one day and said, we have a new program and we think you would be a good candidate for it. It's called the mentor program. My journey, it was a long one. It was a hard one. It was a lesson learned. It was a beautiful one. And I'm still doing it. From the shelter to a shared housing, to a studio in the building where I live now, to my one bedroom.
for those who work in harmony. started in 2013. Me and my dogs lived in a van that we had. And then that broke down and we just lived on the streets since then. When I got the sewage man, I was by myself. I was on the street for 30 years. Hard time, bad times. And you start wearing down where you don't trust nobody, you don't want nothing. You just give up. I had to find something because I knew something had to break. I just looked at the resources, found transition projects, and went there. When Doreen's place brought me here, I thought I was dreaming. I woke up in the morning and said, man, how'd I get here? When I first walked into the room, I had to hold back the tears because I was so excited about it. This place is amazing. I got my own bed, I got a shower, I got a bathtub, I got a mirror, and I can cook my own meals here. It's beautiful, man. When they walk into it, it's, um, it feels like home. I mean, this environment helps me move up in the world. <laughs> if you get housing where you can sleep at night and get perfect rest, you want to change the way you live. You want to walk around and find you a job. It's just a really nice community that I've seen. It gives you a better feeling about yourself. That's what people need. Now I got a roof over my head. My rent's paid on time. I do what I'm supposed to be doing, and now I'm living. 30 years ago, I couldn't say none of this. I didn't have the heart. I didn't trust nobody. Our Girl Gardens is like heaven to me because it gives you a chance to become somebody again. You can't do it by yourself. Because without you guys, this place wouldn't exist. There's a lot of people out there that are like me and need just a foot in the door to get somewhere. I'm really fortunate to have gotten that chance because that's what helped me. And I don't know where I'd be today if yeah, I didn't have that help to do so. Would you harbor a runaway woman? 
fugitive or a slave. Would you harbor a Haitian, Korean, or Czech, a lesbian, trans, or gay? Would you harbor a Christian, a Muslim, a Jew, a heretic, convict, or spy? Searching for home is kind of my perspective of what um, a kid in the foster care system is, is hoping to find and, and the, the nervousness about um, what is this family that I might be going to? You know, are they old or are they young and are they friendly, are they open or are they strict or, you know, what's going through their minds? because they don't really get a say. Coming home um, is when he came to our, our house. And um, I, I remember that joyful moment. And in fact, that piece of music I actually wrote the day after he moved in with us. Leaving home is his own words. Um, and, and all that, um, all the stuff that he was going through, all the challenges, all the struggles, all the angst. Um, the fourth piece is called The Telling, and The Telling is about the day that the chaplain came to our front door. I'm a pretty strong woman, <laughs> and I, I literally, my legs get out from under me, and I just grab the couch, and I I have never ever physically have gone through anything like that in my life. And I felt like it was going to be very difficult for anybody to sing. And so that piece of music is a string quartet and the dancers are going to be telling that story. Going home, I wanted to leave the end of this whole piece of music um, in kind of a hopeful, uplifting way. And it's, it's how our family kind of makes peace with what happened. And we like to say that he slayed the dragon, that he had gone through such upheaval and um, dealt with all these delusions and the demons, that this was one way that he wasn't going to hurt anybody else, that, that he was going to be done, and that he was on a, a better journey. Will they 
be modern? Will they be old? Will they be open? Will they be cold? We are searching, 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 for, searching, searching, for, searching, 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 looking for cozy, looking for bright. Yes, there we are, and they don't bite. Searching, what is my plight? When you're a kid and have no say where you live, they seem to be gracious and take what they give. So I'll we'll keep searching, 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 searching. Are there adventures awaiting me? Will there be brothers or sisters? Or will there be dogs in my home? Searching, searching. And what is it going to be like? Searching, 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 searching. What is my plight? When you're a kid and have no say where you live, they seem gracious and take what they give. And so I'm searching, 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 searching for home. Searching, searching, 
Free from the chaos in my world, I'm shaking the pain off from within. I'm tossing the turmoil I have endured. I'm letting my soul's desire begin. It's my soul's journey on. My soul's journey on. To a place where my spirit can run free. I am free from the monsters in my life. I'm feeling the dark skies opening up. I'm saying the dragon song within. I'm fleeing the pandemonium. I'm allowing the tumult to within. This my soul's journey on. My soul's journey on. To a place where my spirit can run free. Let my spirit soar upward towards the skies. I'm going home, breaking free from the chaos in my life. I'm going Well, I... 
Every single person who comes into that building has a story, and Rosehaven respects the story that comes with the person. It said Rosehaven, and it said shelter for women, children. So I said, okay, well, I think I kind of qualify for that. My name is Shirley Isidore, and I am Kendra James's mom, and I am a recipient of Rosehaven. My name is Cody Jane Baker, and I am the manager of centralized screening for Legacy Health Systems. Well, I met Rosehaven in 1996 when I was struggling on how to get clean and sober. 1999, September the 16th. I have 21 years clean. I did a lot of work to be sitting here today. I succumbed almost 100% to my addiction to alcohol. There were a few times where I almost 100% let myself believe that this was, my, was going to be my life and this is how I was going to die. And for a moment, that was okay. I accepted that. But then I stopped accepting that. I never once went in there and felt inferior or that I was being judged. No discrimination. It's like just open arms when you came through that. When I came through that door, I got much love than I would have got being out here homeless on these streets. The potential of Rosehaven is just, it's, it's endless. With the staff that's there and the, the things that they're working on doing to expand, the care, the social services that they offer and provide. They had set up tents outside to distribute meals and to continue distributing clothing and essential items to those who needed it. They were able to continue their good in, in an incredibly adverse circumstance. We need more of the good that they are doing. Do you have time for me to walk you somewhere? Because I could take you somewhere awesome, but you can get whatever help you need.
PLC is stable and thriving. We've been awarded prestigious grants in recognition of our contributions to the cultural life of Oregon. Our business sponsors uh, maintain their support of us, and 1,000 Friends of PLC is gaining donors. In the not-too-distant future, we dream of having an administrative staff and office space to allow us to have a greater presence in the LGBTQ plus community and to touch many, many more lives. If you believe in our future, join us today. Please consider donating $35 in honor of our 35th anniversary season. But any donation is welcome. Our goal is to have 25 $100 donations and $135 donations. You can donate by texting PLC Roof to 44321 or by visiting the link here on the screen, which is available in the video description as well. We are deeply grateful that you joined us. Thank you.